again, has no sugar, caffeine, or chemicals, 40 vitamins and minerals, rich protein, doesn't stimulate the mTOR pathway. Um, it is the best food in the world, by the way, the very first life on earth, um, give a gift to us from mother nature. All right. So today I am very honored to welcome Catherine Arnston to the show, CEO and founder of Energy Bits. Welcome. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm hoping today that we're going to have a masterclass in algae. This is, and I'll say with the sort of air of, you know, transparency and honesty, Energy Bits is a company that I have followed for a long time. It's been a product that I've kept in my home for a long time and have always sort of understood that spirulina is wonderful for you. But I think there's a couple of things that I think you can speak to far more eloquently than I can around the benefits of algae and why we should be thinking about this as a uh, maybe as a food group that we want to be including in our everyday diet. So before we kind of dive into the different types of algae, let's say, why don't we just define what algae is exactly? Oh, great question. So algae is its own food category. And um, there's actually two main types of algae. One is macroalgae and the other one is microalgae. Uh, I'm going to explain what ma macroalgae is, although our conversation today is about microalgae. So macroalgae is that big stringy stuff that you see washing up on shore, also known as seaweed. That, and, it's, and it's good for you for a, a number of reasons. It has lots of fiber and iodine because it comes from the ocean, but it has virtually no nutrition and it's only in the sea, which is why it's called seaweed. I mean, it also is called kelp or dulse, but basically it's just very fibrous um, uh, type of algae. The other algae, which is what we're talking about, is called microalgae. And it's called microalgae because it's microscopic in size. It is so tiny, you can get a million of these cells on the head of a pin. And microalgae, unlike macro, is everywhere. Macroalgae is only in the ocean. Microalgae is everywhere. It's in the lakes, the rivers, the streams, soil, your swimming pool. Uh, yes, it does close your beaches. We'll talk about why the one we're, algae we're talking about is not that algae. Uh, now, microalgae is has uh, in complete comparison of macro has virtually no fiber, and in fact, when it comes to spirulina, uh, it has zero fiber because it's actually not even a plant; it's a bacteria. And it, it um, compared to macro, it is the most nutrient dense food in the world. I'm going to say that again because I know you won't believe me, but even NASA says one gram of algae has the equivalent nutrition of a thousand grams of fruits or vegetables. One to a thousand. One so micro, algae. one microalgae. One micro gram of microalgae. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Has the same nutrition as a thousand grams of fruits or vegetables. That's about 30 grocery carts of food. So it's really hard to envision, but, um, and, and that's why when, when we, we, we get into some of the detail, uh, because we sell our algae in little tablets and each tablet has the same nutrition um, as an entire plate of vegetables because of this concentrated nutrition. There is nothing in the world with more nutrition than a microalgae. And will the United Nations endorses it as the answer to world hunger for that reason. It has the highest protein in the world, has three times the amount of protein at stake, has the highest chlorophyll in the world, has 500 times more chlorophyll than arugula, 25 times more than, than liquid chlorophyll. So algae uh, uh, is, microalgae is the most concentrated food in the world. And we are all getting sick for two main reasons. One is our food doesn't contain the same nutrition that it used to because our soils are so damaged. So there's no minerals in the soils for the plants to pull up. So even if you are eating vegetables and 95% of people aren't, but even if you were, you're not getting the nutrition that you used to or your grandparents did. And number two, we have too many toxins in our bodies. The average adult now has 700 toxins and our immune system simply can't sustain that. And one of the algae we're going to talk about is chlorella, pulls out the toxins. And the first algae we'll talk about is spirulina, which is very nourishing to your body, to your brain and to your mitochondria. So just to recap, <clears throat> algae, macro and micro, Macro good for the fiber, no nutrition, microalgae, the most concentrated food in the world. And it is a food. In fact, it was the first life on earth 4 billion years ago. And we'll, we'll dig into that. And there are tens of 
thousands of strains of microalgae, tens of thousands. The two we're going to talk about today are spirulina and chlorella, and they are the two that are harvested as, uh, as crops. So not from the ocean, they're harvested in fresh water. So it's food, number one, it's a whole food, not a supplement. Supplements are made from a mashup of extracts and they use high heat, which kills most of the enzymes and other nutri nutrients, not what we are selling here. We are call our algae, we, call it in, we sell them in tiny tablets, we call bits, because they're bits of food that's grown in fresh water. Ours is triple filtered. Um, ours, our algae is quite different from virtually anything else. And we'll talk about that in a minute, but it's grown in triple filtered spring mountain water, dried without high heat, which is a very important point we'll talk about in a minute into a powder. And then we press them into tablets that we call bits. We call our spirulina energy bits because spirulina does give you energy in the moment, mental, physical, um, and also at the mitochondria level and chlorella um, is highest chlorophyll in the world, which pull, and it pulls out toxins. So it helps you recover your health, recover your strength, recover your body. And we call ours recovery bits. So, but we'll get into some more detail about that. But um, yeah, I, I, I have, I have a couple of, I mean, you just said quite a bit there and I just wanted to come back. I, I just want you to know, I'm, I'm packing into our conversation, 13 years of research. So um, th this is, uh, I'm trying my best to make it simple, but there's still a lot of detail. So please yes. interrupt me and help me, let me explain in, in any area that you need further elaboration on. Thank you. Well, I just wanted to come back to what you said. I thought that you're, uh, so those of you that are listening on audio, she's lifting up some uh, signs here. You can see this on our YouTube video. If you want to watch the video, you can see the signs that she's holding up. The first one that you said was 550 pounds of food or 550, sorry, pounds of vegetables is the yes. equivalent to one bag of energy bits. So I just wanted to put that in context for a moment and, and just expand on it quickly, because I think, you know, one of the recommendations, this is why I'm actually a fan of greens in general, because it, or green, let's say powders or things like spirulina um, supplementation, because it's hard. Usually the recommendation for women is like a pound of green veg every day. So that includes like your broccoli, that includes, you know, your kale, the arugula that you mentioned, all of that. And for most women, myself included, I find that to be an incredibly difficult feat on a daily basis to get in a pound of food. And so your, your bags here, like the bags that you're selling are equivalent, at least in nutritional density, if I'm, if I'm understanding you correctly, yes. then it's equivalent in nutritional density to about 550 pounds of vegetables, which is, I mean, you're, if, if I'm recommending for a woman to have a pound of veg daily, you know, that's, if, if you sort of spread that out, that's like a year's worth of, at least by my calculation, more than a year's worth, we have 365 yeah. days. So, you know, you're kind of pushing maybe 18 months, let's say yeah. worth of proper supplementation. Um, yeah. Well, and the CDC recommends eight servings of vegetables or, or fruits a day, eight, so um, here's another great visual that will help. We use that calculation from, the, from NASA again to figure out that each tablet, again, they're about the size of a baby aspirin. So they're, yeah, they're very, tiny. very tiny, mm -hmm. has the same nutrition as an entire uh, plate of vegetables. It's about three quarters of a pound of vegetables. Now wow. I do want to make the caveat that there's other, chlorella does have fiber and we'll talk about that because chlorella, which we call recovery bits, is very much a gut and health and wellness algae, whereas spirulina, which we'll talk about in a minute, is very nourishing uh, to, to your brain, to your body, and mitochondria. So they do completely different things, but, but, um, but there is zero fiber in spirulina. So while you're not gonna get the fiber of a full plate of vegetables, you will get the nutrition. And one of the reasons I, I started the company, well, the reason I started the company is because 15 years ago, my younger sister developed breast cancer in Canada. She's fine now, but her oncologist told her to change her diet to an alkaline diet because it would help with her healing. Now, they didn't tell her what an alkaline diet was or what particularly it did. So she called me, her big sister, who loves her. And I, I have an MBA. I was doing international business and nothing to do with nutrition. But I'm a good researcher and found out that an alkaline diet is basically a plant-based diet because of the chlorophyll in the phytonutrients that have been proven to build your immune system. 
So I did a bunch of research, found foods for her. She did go through chemo. She completely healed. And then I learned about the power of vegetables and how the nutrients in there can help your body stay healthy. So I gave up my career, went back to school, studied nutrition. Then I taught plant-based nutrition for a year. And this is what truly led me to algae because I was telling everybody the importance of eating vegetables. But I got so much pushback from everyone saying, well, they're too heavy to carry home from the grocery store. They go bad too quickly. They get me them. gas. Yeah. They take yeah. too long to cook. They take too long to clean. I eat, I throw half of them out. I argue with my husbands. I argue with my kids. Yeah. Right? Sound familiar? So I thought, okay, I need to find a way to get the nutrition of vegetables into people that's effortless. I had no idea how I was going to do it, but I just went back to everything I'd recommended for my sister, did a deeper dive. And when I got to algae, that's when the miracle happened because it is the most nutrient dense food in the world. Like I said, endorsed by NASA, endorsed by um, the United Nations. It's been grown in Asia for 50 years as an agricultural crop. So there's something here that, by the way, the, the Egyptians used algae 2000 years ago. The Aztecs uh, used it for a food source 250 years ago. It's been taken daily for over 50 years in Asia. It's a crop as big as the beef industry is here. And it's so well studied. There's 100,000 studies. We're not talking 10 or 100 or 1,000 or even 10,000. 100,000 studies is a big number documenting some of the benefits we're going to talk about today on the podcast for spirulina and chlorella if it's grown carefully 99 percent of it is not so my goal was to get this concentrated nutritional food into people because it's working in asia but it nobody here knows about it because it's not grown here uh no one's told you what it is what it does why it's why is it not grown here there's no reason why it can't be. I'm planning to grow it in Florida. It has to be in a subtropical environment. We grow ours in Taiwan. So I drew a line on the map from Taiwan across America, and I got to the middle of Florida. Mm. Um, it's grown in Asia because that's where the industry started back in the late 40s, early 50s. It started in Japan, then it expanded to Taiwan, and then to China, and to Korea. And, and it's as normal there as you know, donuts are here. How sad is that, right? Because what I tell people is algae isn't like broccoli or growing broccoli or carrots. It's like growing wine. Now, wine is affected by the angle of the sun, and it's very affected by the production process. Whether it, you're drinking a you know, Cabernet or a Sauvignon Blanc, it's so affected by the production. So is algae. I heard you say a couple of times now that it's, it's you know, the, the energy bits is not we don't use high heat to produce it. So what is the effect of producing algae or uh, in the production process using high heat? What does that do? Yeah, well, let me talk about two things in particular because these are really, really important uh, and they're long words. So I apologize for the geekiness of it. One is an enzyme, which is an antioxidant called superoxide dismutase, also known as SOD. And the other one is the blue pigment that's in spirulina. I, I'll, I'll, once we finish this conversation, I'll go back and I'll start explaining the different algae because they do completely different things. But spirulina is known as a blue-green algae because it has two pigments in it, the blue one that's called phycocyanin and the green one, which is chlorophyll. Uh, chlorella only has chlorophyll. So what's, uh, let's talk about that blue pigment and why it's so important. Well, First of all, it doesn't exist anywhere else in nature. It's only in spirulina, which, by the way, was the first life on Earth. And I'm going to show you a uh, test because, um, or from a, from a report, phycocyanin, the blue pigment in spirulina, kills cancer cells. It's scientifically proven. Uh, so what I'm going to show you is this was an experiment they did. They dyed uh, cancer cells purple, and they put some phycocyanin in the Petri dish. And then they measured it over a 24 hour period mm -hmm. and the cancer cells virtually disappeared after 24 hours because of the phycocyanin. This is what the chemotherapy companies use when uh, to kill cancer cells. And you can Google phycocyanin and cancer treatments and you'll see PubMed articles. So, you know, that I'm telling you the truth, but no one's ever told you this. Right. But what's so interesting is the phycocyanin that was used in this experiment, there's 4,000 times more phycocyanin in one of our spirulina tablets. 
one. But here's the problem. Phycocyanin is destroyed by high heat. You lose 50% of the value immediately once you get to uh, uh, a certain temperature over 100, 100 Fahrenheit. But that blue phycocyanin has amazing properties. By the way, it also has what's called anti-angiogenesis properties, which is another geeky mouthful. What does that mean? It means it stops the growth of blood vessels to tumors and cancers. Again, proven. There's an association called angiogen.org who are based here in the Boston area. They invited us to their conference a couple of years ago because they contacted us and said, did you know that you're your spirulina you know, stops to grow the blood vessels to, to tumors. And that term is called anti-angiogenesis. By the way, while we're talking about phycocyanin, I'll tell you one other important thing, because this is coming up again. They have found out that the blue phycocyanin sits on top of the cells where the COVID virus enters. It's called the ACE2 receptor cell. Sorry, more geek. Um, and those cells are predominantly in your nose, your throat, your mouth, your and your lungs and your stomach lining to a certain degree. That's where the virus enters. The COVID, the blue phycocyanin has been shown to sit on top of that, those cells, and the, the COVID virus can't enter. It has those prongs, and that's where they use these prongs to get into the cell. It just slides on through. And as proof of that, the uh, the um, pharmacology department at the University of Pittsburgh, but three years ago, they developed a nose spray, COVID nose spray made of algae. And I'm sure it was because of uh, they used phycocyanin because it's proven to have these benefits. Now you don't get any of those benefits from less expensive algae because they've all used high heat, which kills the phycocyanin. Okay, let me let me stop you there for a moment. So phycocyanin is this blue tint that we see in the spirulina. It's a pigment. Yes, it's a pigment. Yes. And, and, uh, and, and it's so spelled for those who are listening, it's P H Y C O C Y A N I N. Yeah. So we'll make sure that that's in the show notes. And so it's this blue pigment. It's involved in this anti-angiogenesis. It sits on the ACE2 receptor, which we've known is sort of the it's become really infamous in the last several years because of the COVID virus. It is the main uh, mechanism of entry or invasion, let's say, of the virus yes. into our cells. Um, you you were holding up, and I would love the reference for the paper that you were where they had dyed the cancer cells purple, and then uh, the the phycocyanin. Uh, what what is the? I, I guess my question here is, what is the mechanism of action? So how is the phycocyanin? destroying the cancer cells? Is it autolysosomal? Is it that it's encapsulating and destroying it? Like, what is it doing? It's a great question. So, um, and I usually get into this deep dive after I've explained what mitochondria are and how the energy is developed. Oh, my, my audience is so smart. It's okay. You, okay. Can, you can geek out okay. as hard as right. you want. Here. Okay, yes. sweet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in the, you know, the mitochondria generate all of your cellular energy, which is called ATP. And the actual mechanism by which the ATP is produced is through something called the electron transport chain, which is a series of molecules that are embedded into the inner membrane of the mitochondria. Now, I, I uh, make the analogy of the electron transport chain and the various uh, molecules uh, to um, similar to like a relay race. When you watch a you know, relay race, someone has the baton and they run a certain distance and they pass it to the next runner who runs a certain distance and eventually they are one of them crosses the finish line. Well, your electron transport chain is very similar, except what's being passed along is not a baton, it's electrons. And so each at each stage, there's five stage, four stages, and then the final stage is where the ATP is actually produced. That's the equivalent of the finish line. So in this chain, this, this sort of relay race of sorts, there are two um, molecules that are called um, uh, uh, sort of um, transport molecules. So they they move around. One of them is CoQ10. We're not going to talk about that today. But the other one goes between station three and four, and it's called cytochrome C. So think of cytochrome C. It's kind of like a shuttle bus. You know, what? you're at the airport, you're ready to take off. You can't get on that plane if you've got a. You're at Atlanta and you got to get on that shuttle bus, or now they're, um, you know, subways or whatever. So, so cytochrome C is kind of like this shuttle bus that carries the electrons from station three to station four. Now, the good news is, in a healthy cell, 
that cytochrome C is sped up by the blue pigment in spirulina. This is one of the many reasons why spirulina gives you more energy because it speeds up the ability of your electron transport chain to generate ATP. And when you have more ATP, you can do more things. You have more, I say it's like money. You can, with more money, you can do more things and you have more choices. You have more ATP, you can do more things and you have more choices. And ATP does way more than just help you run to the store to pick up you know, some errands or go, go running or something. It gener it's the energy your body needs to heal, to sleep, to generate thoughts, neurotransmitters, your lymphatic system, your you know, taking out the garbage, detox. So more ATP is absolutely critical to your health. Your, your job, I tell people, your job is to learn how to generate more ATP. And we'll talk about how you do that. So in a healthy cell, that's what this cytochrome C cell does, is it moves the electrons quickly from station three to four, generates more ATP, happy day. However, in a cancer cell or a what's called a senescent cell, which are basically cells that are subdivided so often that they're, uh, they're called um, zombie cells. They don't, they don't do anything except they're inflammatory. What happens is that phytochrome C kicks out this, the site, the phycocyanin rather, the blue pigment in spirulina, kicks out the, the cytochrome C molecule and that kills the cancer cells and the senescent cells. That's what's happening. And the, it's so interesting to me because I've been reading about how uh, the chemotherapy companies include this process, well, what they do to determine if your treatment is working they do. They have a way to measure the amount of cytochrome C in your bloodstream. And if you have a high amount of cytochrome C, it indicates there's been a lot of, of cancer cells killed. And this is one of the mechanisms by why it happens. That cytochrome C is, is kicked out by the phycocyanin, the blue pigment, and it targets the cancer cells and the senescent cells, which senescent cells are you know, should be dead, should be, you know, removed. And you can do that through, you know, um, uh, cryotherapy and some other things, but pretty amazing, right? And I yeah. will send all this to you. So, because you, you need to understand that your body constantly needs to be um, uh, uh, having removal of cancer cells. They're always in our body. They're all over the place. But if you have a strong immune system, it can fight the cancer cells and um, from growing and taking over, which, uh, and part of that is uh, part of the immune system health is you're gonna get from chlorella, which is, has the highest chlorophyll and pulls out toxins. But the, when you have what's called a healthy cell death, it's called um, uh, apoptosis. And you want that, it's like taking the garbage out all the time. But necrosis, when you have cancer cells, they explode and then they spill out all the cancer uh, um, toxins to the next cells. And that's why cancer grows so quickly and phycocyanin um, uh, you know, pr protects you from that. So it's a pretty important nutrient and not found anywhere else in nature except in raw spirulina. So again, raw spirulina, so either frozen or ours, because when high heat is used to dry the algae, it kills that phycocyanin. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about, you've mentioned two algae uh, and sort of, you know, uh, switching between spirulina and chlorella. Let's actually delineate for the listener, the difference between the blue green algae, which we've been talking about a little bit spirulina. We can go down yes. a little bit of a deeper rabbit <laughs> hole with that as well as chlorella. What are the differences between the two? Sure. So spirulina, as you mentioned, is a blue green algae and it's very energizing. We call that's why we call our spirulina energy bits. And you say, well, how does it get, how is it energizing? Well, there's a couple of mechanisms. First of all, um, it has the highest pro spirulina has the highest protein in the world. 64%, ours is 64% protein. And importantly, all of that protein is in individual aminos. When you eat animal protein, they're all bound up. And it can take two to three days for your body to break it down into aminos so that you can absorb them because you can't absorb it like that. Then you have collagen, um, which are what's called peptides. They're clusters of, of proteins, so they get absorbed a little faster. Algae, the aminos are all individual, so they're instantly absorbed. And so this is really important because it's not just what you eat, it's what you absorb that gives you health. And so um, a lot of people, when as they get older, they have 
um, difficult digestive uh, processes, they're missing enzymes. And so that's one of the reasons why it's hard for older people to eat proteins, animal proteins sometimes, because they don't have that ability. Algae, spirulina algae, uh, 18 of the, nine, of the 20 aminos, including the nine that your body can't make. So it's a complete protein, so is chlorella. So first of all, it has the highest protein in the world, and then it has high B vitamins, which convert the aminos into energy in the moment. Now it's not a stimulant like coffee, caffeine, or, or, or sugar, where you get a burst of energy and then a crash. I call, this is what quiet, I call it quiet energy. You might not even notice it unless you're going for a run or we were talking about earlier about you know kids uh, for soccer. It's really great as a pre-workout, but just, uh, and there's zero carbs. I was just on Min, Dr. Mindy Peltz's podcast uh, who talks a lot about fasting. You can take spirulina or chlorella in your fasting. We recommend the spirulina for sure because it gives you energy. It gives you focus. It satisfies your hunger in minutes and does not interfere with your fast. It does has zero carbs. So now you're getting uh, um, a little, um, you know, perk me up mentally, physically. It's it, You just feel fresh. You feel like you had a great night's sleep, not a rush uh, and so that's in the moment. It also is a vasodilator, which means it opens up your blood vessels. So, you so get it's more. a great pre-workout. So for those ladies that great. are listening who listen, who like to work out in the morning, as I did this morning, it's actually instead of having the coffee, uh, if you're someone who's maybe sensitive to coffee or you don't want to have, I typically work out fasted. Like I typically don't yes, eat in the morning when I train, yeah. even though... If I could, I would, but it just doesn't, I don't like the feeling of eating if, like at five in the morning. So I, I yeah. typically will take, I'll take some of, I'll take green, like I'll have just some water with lemon. Maybe I'll have some electrolytes. And I've been, I'm recently, I've been taking the spirulina as a pre-workout. So yeah. I'm taking the spirulina in the morning, not yes. in the evening, because I find yes. that it gives me a bit of a sort of a, a natural lift as, as you've been yes. describing. It's yeah. very subtle. Um, and it satisfies your hunger, it takes the edge off. And there's only one calorie per tablet. So if you are on a calorie restricted diet, you know, some people, if they're training for, you know, um, pro you know professional games or uh, weightlifting or something, they, they, they're they calorie conscious. So, so it's really terrific for that reason. And it, um, again, has no sugar, caffeine or chemicals, 40 vitamins and minerals, rich protein, doesn't stimulate the mTOR pathway. Um, it is the best food in the world, by the way, the very first life on earth, um, give a gift to us from mother nature. We just grow it very carefully and dry it very carefully to preserve all the nutrition. So that spirulina gives you energy mentally and physically in the moment. There's no upper limit. I mean, you could have a hundred a day if you wanted. It's just food. It's just very nutrient dense food. But the other thing about spirulina is in addition to that moment of getting your hunger satisfied, mental acuity improved, uh, physical energy, it also delivers energy to the mitochondria at a, and uh, it does it in a number of ways, particularly because it has the highest concentration of another very important nutrient I was going to talk about called superoxide dismutase. Uh, now you've probably never heard of superoxide dismutase, but it is a critical uh, antioxidant that your body makes for you from the moment you're born until the age of 30. And then it stops, just like how it stops generating melatonin and it also stops generating glutathione. We'll talk about those later on. So what's so important about uh, superoxide dismutase? It is one of the few antioxidants that can get into the inner membrane of the mitochondria. We'll do a deeper dive on this in a minute to stop free radical damage, which kills your mitochondria's DNA. And when your mitochondria DNA get damaged, they either die, they mutate, they send wrong cell signals. This is what triggers disease, uh, uh, any kind of issue, health issue, uh, whether it's weight gain, metabolic health, skin disorders, digestive disorders, absolutely everything is due to mitochondria damage. And superoxide dismutase is one of the few antioxidants that can prevent that. But you can't find it in food and your body stops making it after the age of 30. The highest concentration of superoxide dismutase is in our spirulina because again, it's an enzyme which kills, uh, and so it's killed by um, high heat. And what superoxide dismutase is, it takes the free radicals that are produced as a result of ATP production and converts them into water, harmless water. That's it, problem solved, mitochondria is saved. So now it can generate more ATP for you in the moment and long-term. 
This is the key to healing. This is the key to longevity. And superoxidismutase, by the way, there's 25,000 studies documenting how it's been proven to prevent heart disease, Alzheimer's, aging. Uh, it's off the charts, but you can't get superoxidismutase from any food except raw spirulina. Yeah. So just for the listener, uh, superoxide dismutase is an enzyme, as she's mentioned, who uh, will sort of partition the superoxide, that O2 radical, uh, into, as you've mentioned, oxygen and high and into like sort of molecular, just ordinary run of the mill oxygen and hydrogen peroxide. Right. And if we're not clearing the superoxide, um, it's, it can cause a lot of different types of cell damage. So we do yes. want to be, we, we do want to be making sure that that's being cleared. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, cause, um, just to again, put it into simpler terms. So we all know about free radicals and they are molecules that have an unpaired electron. And so what they do is they steal electron from another the next molecule which damages that molecule and then that molecule becomes unstable <clears throat> it becomes a free radical so it steals a, an electron from the next one so this is how tissue damage occurs this is what's called inflammation now superoxide which is a type of free radical generated by the mitochondria so it's a very specific type of free radical I was reading how it is the worst, the most damaging of all free radicals. And I thought, well, what makes it so damaging? So I did some research and found out that superoxide, the free radical that's released during ATP production in the mitochondria, has three pairs, three unpaired electrons. So it's three times as damaging. It steals three times as many electrons from neighboring molecules and tissues. So it's that much more um, uh, disastrous. So the fact that superoxide dismutase can neutralize that superoxide free radical is pretty powerful stuff. I tell people it's like having the uh, you know uh, firemen in there uh, because what it does is it just turns all those free radicals into water. So so you're saved. <laughs> and when your mitochondria are saved, so are you because the more mitochondria as you get older, you have you, fewer of them and they become more damaged. And one of the other things that's uh, superoxidismutase is that it stops the shortening of your telomeres, which are what protect your DNA. And so when your telomeres shorten, your DNA gets exposed and is more likely to be damaged. And this contributes to more disease. Um, and so the superoxidismutase prevents that from happening. So, uh, and we'll, we, you know, it also has been, um, there's this great book that I think I was mentioning earlier called Brain Energy uh, by Dr. Chris Palmer. He's a psychiatrist at the Harvard Medical School. His entire book is about how all brain issues, depressions, post-traumatic stress disorder, uh, uh, anxiety, are all ultimately due to damaged mitochondria. And because spirulina, because of the superoxide dismutase and the pigment we spoke about earlier, phycocyanin, protects the brain, protects the mitochondria. So that's why I say spirulina it's very much a brain food. Um, and by the way, a lot of people eat fatty fish because um, of the omega-3 in it. And I tell people, well, where do you think the, the fish get the omega-3 from? They get it from algae. So save yourself, save the oceans. Uh, this is brain food. Think of spirulina as brain food um, because it heals the mitochondria. And we're going to get to chlorella next. It's very much a gut healing food. So brain food for spirulina, gut and wellness um, uh, and detox for the chlorella. And we'll, and we'll talk about that next. Tell me a little bit about collagen. I know that there's a high collagen concentration in spirulina. Talk a little yeah. bit about that. Well, um, your, your collagen is, is uh, um, required, is, is used in your joints, your skin. And so you want more collagen as you get older, uh, your collagen production decreases. Well, here's the great thing. Uh, algae has more collagen than collagen powder. And I did an analysis on a amino acid basis, we have up to 400% of the of different aminos uh, in algae compared to collagen. By the way, collagen is not a complete protein. It does not have tryptophan. And there's different nutrients your body needs to actually create your own collagen. And it's not nat naturally in the collagen powder, they have to add it. It's um, things like uh, vitamin A, I think zinc, and a couple other things. So, so there's up to 430% more collagen in algae than there is in collagen powder. And 
uh, part of wrinkles is because of slowing production of collagen and elastin, by the way. So collagen, think of collagen as the filler in, in a building. Like, so maybe the like the um, yeah, you know, the stuff that they, they fill all the walls with. And elastin is like the structure that keeps your um, building up and your cells and your skin taut. But things like free radicals um, and excess calcium damage your elastin. So it starts to, to drop, which leads to wrinkles. And then the collagen powder, uh, it, uh, the collagen rather keeps your skin dewy and fresh. And, and the spirulina in particular, and also the chlorella, it restores the collagen and it uh, allows your skin to retain the um, dewiness, the moisture level. I'm, I'm blanking on the one of the terms, but, uh, and it also because it's, they're both so alkaline, they kill blemishes. Uh, your skin needs to be, uh, there's certain different pHs of different parts of your body. And so algae, you know, feeds your skin, protects your collagen, protects your elastin. Uh, you may take algae for energy, maybe the spirulina for a workout, but you're going to get better skin. You're going to get protected uh, mitochondria. You're going to have better acuity mentally. I mean, it's it's the gift that keeps on giving. It's almost, I came up with a saying, the algae's benefits are too simple to believe and too powerful not to, um, yeah. because it, it literally is like a miracle. And if there wasn't the science to prove everything, um, I would be in trouble, but there is. It, it just hasn't been shared with you. So that's what I've done. I've spent 13 years living on PubMed to get all this science so I can yeah, help Yeah, collagen is, is, is one of those, um, I think it gets a really bad rap or it can be controversial because people fail to distinguish between the, the muscle specific benefits of a protein, like muscle protein synthesis, of which collagen is a very poor source of protein that's gonna drive that. But it also, to your point, has a lot of bone benefits and a lot of skin, like orthopedic benefits and a lot of skin benefits. So with collagen, as you've mentioned, reduces wrinkles. It helps with hydration. It helps with the elasticity that you were saying. It also helps with skin brightness and pore size. So I don't know yes. about you, but like I got some pores, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> like on yeah. my, you know, my nose, like my T-zone, all of that. Um, but then in, in terms of the orthopedic benefits, collagen is really important for bone strength, bone density, mineral mass. It, you know, we've been talking about inflammation. It inhibits inflammatory cytokines. It improves joint stability, aids in muscle recovery. Like collagen is really important, but it doesn't yeah. drive MPS, right? So I do like some of the people that are like, collagen is the worst. It's like, okay, it is the worst for muscle protein synthesis. If you're taking collagen, thinking that it's going to help drive muscle growth, you're, you've gone awry. Yeah. However, yeah. We do want to be thinking about the tendons, the ligaments, and the joints that are associated with right. those, with those, you know, muscle fibers that also need support. And I would argue just as much, if not more support as we age, as we are in our forties, fifties, and sixties, because as you, I think you mentioned our, our collagen synthesis also declines with age yes. as many things do, right? Skin yeah. elastin and collagen production, After all these 40, things. Like we're, we're like sitting ducks, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that it's important to be thinking about collagen and if you can kind of get it all in one uh you know bit if you will like all exactly. in one sort of source it's much easier than having i mean i still have a, a literally a closet full of supplements but yeah. it is much more efficient both from a financial perspective and a space saving uh oh, perspective totally. to just sort of get it from one source yeah yeah and things, you know, everybody I know has anywhere from 10 to like, I think Dave Asprey takes 100 supplements, which I think is a little excessive, but they all expire at different times. They take so much room. You can clear out your multivitamin, your CoQ10, your biotin, your fish oil, your collagen. Just take algae every day. It saves you money. It saves you time. It's, it's um, the most sustainable eco-friendly food in the world it has a three-year expiry date i mean honestly it's so packed with so many benefits it, it's almost unbelievable but like i said the science is there so so you and, and we'll we'll get to chlorella next but when you take chlorella you can you know, don't have to worry about to eat, having vitamins you can get rid of uh chlorophyll water you can uh, if you don't want to eat um you know when you're traveling you, you can get rid of you know things like zinc because it's got everything in there that's your immune system. So they're very efficient. In fact, I call them your 
health insurance, honestly, because it gives you the new, it's nutritional insurance. It's spirulina is your nutritional insurance. Chlorella is your health insurance. All right. And, let's talk about chlorella. We're kind of okay, there now. Right. I know we've spent other, a lot of time talking about spirulina, but yeah, let's talk yeah. about chlorella and how Equally it. Equally is important, but for different reasons. Yeah. yeah. So what does chlorella do? Well, spirulina has the highest protein in the world. Chlorella is known for having the highest chlorophyll in the world. And you may say to yourself, well, what's so important about chlorophyll? Chlorophyll builds your blood. They have used chlorophyll for centuries uh, when pe they gave people surgeries back in the 1800s or 1200s or whatever, be because they would heal just as fast as if they'd had a blood transfusion. And this is the reason. And wasn't when you it used in Chernobyl, wasn't it used in Chernobyl? I remember, uh, well, reading, the chlor I remember reading chlorella something. was used in Chernobyl to pull yeah. out the, uh, and I'll get to that in a minute, to pull yeah. out toxins. It pulls out all heavy metals, including radiation. But yeah, the yeah. chlorophyll number one builds your blood. When you have healthy blood, you're going to have a healthier body. By the way, chlorella algae has 25 times more chlorophyll than liquid chlorophyll. A lot of people are taking liquid chlorophyll. Don't cheat yourself because with liquid chlorophyll, you only get chlorophyll. With chlorella, you get more chlorophyll plus 60% protein, 40 vitamins and minerals, and the ability to detox and pull out heavy metals. So it's a it's a much better value for you. So that's number one, chlorophyll builds your blood. Number two, chlorophyll is a fat-based pigment. The blue in spirulina is a water-based pigment. Why is that important? Because uh, your cells have a membrane around them which is called a lipid membrane, which is a fancy way of saying a fat membrane. So uh, things like vitamin D, vitamin E, omega-3, these are important because they keep your cell membranes intact and moist so that nutrients can get in and toxins can get out. Well, chlorophyll does that too because it's a fat-based pigment. And, and lots of people do cleanses with you know juice, uh, vegetable fast juices. And part of what's happening is it's feeding the cell membrane so that nutrients can get in and toxins can get out. So that's really cool about the chlorophyll. Build your blood, build your, your cell walls. Um, number two, chlorophyll kills bacteria. It, you can use it topically, uh, lots of homeopaths do to, uh, on cuts. And it also pulls out bacteria in your body, in your colon everywhere. So it kills bacteria and removes them. And the way it removes them is because chlorella has the hardest cell wall in the plant kingdom. And it's so hard that it actually has to be cracked to production. Nonetheless, that hard cell wall attaches to all heavy metals, lead, mercury, radiation, aluminum. Yes, there's aluminum in COVID uh, vaccines. And it chelates them, which means pulls them out. Now you'll need to have enough chlorella to do that because if you only take 10, it won't quite pull them all, all the way. You need more like 20 or 30 for detox benefits. But the added fact that it kills bacteria and it, it removes all the glyphosate, all the pesticides, all the heavy metals, aluminum from your brain and pulls them out is, is pretty powerful. So that's why it's very much a wellness and healing algae um, as opposed to energy, which is or spirulina, which is an energizing algae. Now, one of the other cool things about chlorella is I'd mentioned has that hard cell well, which is made of fiber and fiber is necessary to feed your gut biome because that's where the healthy and unhealthy bacteria are. So you need, so this has fiber in it, unlike spirulina that has none. So it definitely feeds the gut biome to uh, facilitate a healthier gut and immune system. And it has all of the nutrients, speaking of immune system, that your immune system needs. Now your immune system is your defense to invaders, viruses, bugs, doesn't really matter. It identifies them. And if your immune system is strong enough and 80% of your immune system is in your gut, it can identify the invader, kill it and remove it. And even better, remember it so that it knows how to uh, do it even better and more efficiently next time. Chlorella builds your immune system. So it can be very, um, very uh, effective at that process. But it's all, and so all of that activity that's going on is happening in your gut, in your lower area. So spirulina, which is very nourishing to your mitochondria and to your body and to your brain, again, is, a, is very much a brain food. And chlorella is very much a gut healing elimination uh, food and it works in the lower part. I came up with a great analogy that to help people understand the difference between the two of them. 
as I speak at a lot of conferences and fancy hotels. And it occurred to me that spirulina, because it's so nourishing, um, is like room service at a hotel. It gives you everything you need for the day, gets you out, you know, fed and activated and you know, feeling great, do your workout. And chlorella, because it cleans out all the junk in your trunk, pulls out all the stuff that shouldn't be there. It's like housekeeping. So think of spirulina as room service and chlorella as housekeeping. And they work beautifully together, completely different. And let's also not forget that your brain is connected to your gut by something called the vagus nerve. And so when your brain is functioning better, it will send messages to your stomach to work better, to digest better, to absorb better. And that's why when you're anxious or rushed, you do not want to eat because your digestion will not be very good or is not optimal. When you, I eat with calm music or in silence and I stay focused and present and my digestion is much better that way. And on the other hand, if your digestion or you have gut issues and the wrong bacteria, too much candida, it affects how your brain functions. So, so the two of them balance out your body so they can work optimally. Your brain and your gut can work optimally and perform optimally for you. And the spirulina helps with the mitochondria in your brain and your body functioning. And the chlorella removes toxins which interfere with body functioning and builds your immune system. So um, it, all the wellness and elimination processes can work really well. And one more thing I forgot to mention, we generally recommend spirulina in the morning or during the day or before a workout because that's when you're hungry that's when you need energy you can take it any time of day but that's when most people want it and we generally recommend the chlorella before bed because your body goes through a detox repair cycle when you're sleeping and so in fact chlorella has the highest tryptophan in the world which can, uh, is a precursor to melatonin so it will actually even help you with sleeping it won't make you sleepy but it will get you into a deeper sleep when you are sleeping now, you can take either of them together, separate, with food, instead of food. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I, I eat both of them all day long, but definitely take chlorella before bed and definitely take the spirulina in the morning. Uh, most people you know, take 10 spirulina in the morning and 10 chlorella at night for the wellness benefits. But if you want to do detox, you're going to need 20 or 30 tablets uh, to remove um, whatever you want to remove. And then you can get back to 10 a day. Now, I eat way more than that. I'm not, I don't tell anybody how much I eat anymore. But um, one of the things it does pull out, by the way, is alcohol. So if you enjoy a couple of glasses of wine or a couple of beers or you have college kids, get them taking 20 or 30 chlorella tablets before bed. That It will pull out all the alcohol. They'll never have a hangover. They are sober in an hour and a half. And it's pretty amazing. It works every single time. Well, I wanted to talk a little bit about, as you were talking about, you know, the glyphosates and the, you know, the chelation, the removing, removal of toxins, there are going to be moms who are listening to this, who have autistic children, children who are on the spectrum. And we see this more and more, um, you know, I, I think that the current run rate is like one in 24 kids are That's on the spectrum terrible. in some kind. And there's still ongoing speculation around the, it's a multifactorial disease, but we, what we often see with these children is impaired detoxification. So their ability to bind and remove toxins are impaired relative to, I'm using air quotes here, what normal, what normal should be, right? Or like yeah. a nor non-autistic child is. Right. And so when you pair that with medical interventions uh, that do have aluminum and, and some of the things that you mentioned, um, it can be harder for the child to, um, uh, to, to reap the benefit, let's say of the, of the proposed, you know, the, the proposed benefit is not necessarily going to be actualized because it's going to potentially cause more harm than good because they are just keeping some of these adjuvants in the body for longer. Can you speak a little bit about, and so I wanted to carve out a little piece for autistic children because Lord knows, and I have, you know, we've, I've treated autistic kids like they eat white food and brown food too. That's yeah. the other thing is you can't yeah. get them to eat any greens. Like it's disgusting yeah. to them. They will try to yeah. control their environment. It's like they will have bread, like anything that's white they'll eat, which is usually yeah. terrible. And then anything that's brown, right? It's like, maybe you can get them to have some beef, but you know, uh, so I wanted to talk yes. about autistic children. And then I was talking to you in the pre-chat before we got going about 
um, athletes. My kids yes. are both, um, they're still, you know, they're 13 and 11, almost 13, almost 11, but they are practicing quite a bit with soccer. Yeah. So there's like three or four practices a week. There's at least a game a week. And then there's like the stuff that they're doing in between. Um, so we'd love to talk about that. So let's start with autism. Let's start with detoxification. And then we so can glad move. you mentioned autism because yep. moms, what does it do for autistic children? Well, so much of that issue is a brain related uh, issue. We have, we have uh, coaches who uh, at schools that like they write us within 24 hours. Oh my God, this was the most amazing thing. My kids could focus. This gives your children focus. And because it's helping heal the mitochondria, you know, you'll never heal autism, but you can make the, um, make uh, life a lot easier to deal with when they can function better. This improves brain function and all nutritional functionality because it gets into the mitochondria. So, uh, and generally we recommend either one tablet or half a tablet for their age. So if you have 10 year olds, give them anywhere between five and 10. If they're 12, six to 12, it's, but again, you can have as much as you want and they can swallow them. If they don't like the taste, they can swallow them. And most well, that's the thing with autistic kids is the taste, right? So you gotta, yeah. I would say if they can swallow them, that's better because they're yes. going to, especially with, I would say the, maybe the spirit, I forget which one is spirulina that kind of for green. sure. Almost yeah. nine, the spirulina I would say 99% like, <laughs> yeah. swallow the spirulina. I'm one of the yeah. few people that chew it, but you know, it's yeah. like my, my company. So mm -hmm. now on, you, you'll see an improvement literally within a couple of hours. It, it doesn't take long because it gets right into your body because spirulina has no cellulose wall for your body to break down. So the nutrients, it's 99% bioavailable. It will go right to the mitochondria, right to the brain. If you can get them to take more, take more. This is one of the rare occasions where more is better. So get them taking 30 a day if you can. So spirulina for sure for the, um, the mental acuity, the emotional stability, uh, um, better uh, just engagement with life. It's, it's so nourishing. I just can't wait for you to try them. And as we mentioned on the chlorella side, because it pulls out toxins, which are interfering with the production or the operation of mitochondria and all of your other cellular activities. The, and, and by the way, I don't know um, if autistic children, if, if, if you ever have constipation, this is your answer. The high chlorophyll stimulates what's called peristalsis, which is a bowel movement, um, but it does a very, it's very gentle. And again, it's food. So this is very much uh, healing the gut, which if they're having, you know, autistic children have issues with. Well, if they're only eating white and brown food, it's like by necessity, they're going to have problems they're with totally their bowels. They're totally going to be constipated. Yeah. Like, yeah. And yeah. now this one tastes better. I love this with pistachio nuts. My favorite is the salt and vinegar type, but any or or um, uh, macadamia nuts. But they can also swallow this. Still make this will take a little longer to get in because it has a hard cell wall. Spirulina has none, so it, it's more of a couple of hours before you'll see uh, anything from from this. But the the, the spirulina is instant, so this will help with the brain, the focus, the stability, the engagement, the nourishment, and this will pull out the toxins um, and support elimination, sleep, um, and um, gut health. So you can see how the two of them work beautifully together. Again, food, not a supplement. So half a tablet for their age. Is that what you're half recommending? To one or one. So or one. Okay. Try to give them more if, if they're 10. By the way, I didn't mention this earlier when we were talking about skin, but uh, I turn 67 next week. And uh, I, I, people are always commenting on my skin uh, and I don't do Botox. I don't do anything fancy. You look fabulous. Uh, I just eat algae every day and have mm -hmm. for 13 years. And it's my collagen, my elastin. I don't have breakouts. So I am the poster child for proof that this stuff works. And um, I look younger than I did 13 years ago. So anyways, just want to throw that out there. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for sharing. And talk to me about, I could talk, talk to me about athletics as well. So yes. I have so, like competitive kids in soccer. They're training all the time. I'm also, I'm not in competitive soccer, but I train five days a week. I'm also doing cardio and yeah, all the yeah. things. So how do we, how do we think about this? Yeah. When I first started, 
we um, had a lot of runners on our team. And so they reached out to bloggers who were runners. And before we knew it, we became a sports nutrition company. Bloggers, marathon runners, triathletes. We had so many Olympic teams were using our product teams that I sent two of my team over to Sochi in Russia, like, you know, eight years ago. Uh, we had open invitation at the Canadian Olympic Village, American Olympic Village. You can go on our website. There's at least 50 testimonials from professional and Olympic athletes saying how much this helps them. And what does it do? Spirulina gives you focus and energy. You will have the best run, the best lifting, and you won't even notice it. It's it, There's no carbs. So uh, a lot of people, when they're marathon runners, you know, they use goo and bars and Gatorades and that upsets their stomach and they get digest indigestion and it's it's messy. <laughs> I we used to do all the triathlete. I used to go to the triathlon shows at four o'clock in the morning and people love this stuff. Gives them quiet energy. So for a workout, you should really be taking 20. If you're a professional, maybe 30. 10, 10 is okay, but not 10 is great for just getting up in the morning and just getting on with your day. I think for I just workout, took a gob of them. I didn't even count them. I just sort of, whatever yeah. came in my hand this morning, yeah. it was too early. Yeah. I was like, okay, this is about 25. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 25, 30. Yeah. Fantastic. And it's, yeah. it will get into your bloodstream. Give it, um, give it 15, 20 minutes. So take it 15 or 20 minutes before your workout. Never upset your stomach. You get upset stomach from supplements because they are made from extracts. And they use high heat to uh, to make them. And these are these extracts don't exist in nature. So when they get hit your stomach, your body's going like, "What's this?" And so it causes. I can't take supplements on an empty stomach, but I always eat this on a stomach. And I I I always work out fasted I, I, with some of these. So really terrific. You'll I promise you. Uh, I want you to try an experiment. At least try 30 before your next workout. Go for your standard run or your, whatever you're lifting, whatever your workout for your kids, same thing. I promise you, you will see a difference that you won't believe. And you won't even have to work at it. It just, you just have more juice in your in your tank to to work to and you so it's just effortless improvement. So for your kids, if they're going to a soccer game, uh, you know, again for their age, at least well, give them 10 or 20, because you do want more for the workouts. Your kids will outperform. This is way better than any of those bars, those drinks, those goos. One ingredient, it's a whole food, spirulina before your workout. Then for post-workout, you want chlorella. Uh, now again, zero carbs, zero sugar, caffeine, or chemicals. And as you know, after you work out, your body's still burning fat. So if that's a goal, this will continue that process because there's no sugar to interfere with the process. But most importantly, is that it will pull out lactic acid and it will help your muscles be restored. And at the same time, you know, it's got collagen and all the other, uh, lots of people when they push themselves for workouts uh, or a competition, whether you're a kid or a professional, you know, it's hard on your immune system. You take this every day, this will support your immune system. We know so many people that do marathon races or triathletes, and then the next day they, they're just, they get sick because they've just pushed themselves so hard. This will prevent this. It's just from mother nature and we just grow it very carefully and preserve all the nutrients so nothing is damaged so you get maximum value. I was gonna say, is there anyone that shouldn't take it? I mean, it sounds so wonderful for a variety of different cohorts, a variety of different populations, age, conditions, et cetera. Is there, are there contraindications to consuming it in any way? Spirulina, zero absolutely zero you can give this to newborns it's great for pregnant women nursing moms uh pets your pets will love this it's crazy wow. so yes. uh honestly it is the food of the future i call it fast food because all you have to do, if you can swallow water you can get the nourishment you need in seconds that was my whole purpose because people would just weren't taking the time to cook vegetables or healthy meals so zero contraindications any age group of any kind in any part of the world, zero, zero, zero. It's Love fabulous that. for everyone. Great. Chlorella, virtually the same thing, but we only point out that um, because chlorella pulls out toxins, spirulina only is cleansing, not detoxing. If you are taking medications and if there are metals in them, uh, it, we just don't know whether it would pull them out or not. So we just say, take the chlorella two hours before or after 
any medications that you may be taking. So I would encourage people, you know, if you have any doubts, go to Amazon, buy a $6 pouch. It has 30 tablets in it. Just make sure that you're fine. And then come back to the website, energybits.com. We have a discount code, the word better, B-E-T-T-E-R. And that will give you 20% off anything on our website. The bags are your best value. They're normally uh, $130, but with your discount code, uh, that brings it down to $104. Now, I, for, I 500 this, pa- for 500 pounds. The equivalent of, of 551 <laughs> pounds of vegetables. Yeah, try to and do that at the grocery store. <laughs> here, here, that's yeah. 30 pounds of, gro- right here, we got yeah. each bag is 50, you know, 30, 30 grocery carts of food. But here's mm. what will really help you understand it better. For basic nourishment and basic wellness, 10 tablets a day will do the trick. Mm. That's a dollar a day. A dollar a day. Everybody can afford that. We're spending $4 on a, macchiano whatever amazon or at, at, at starbucks the venti double frappuccino no i don't but maybe you do yeah <laughs> you know i forgot to mention they're the most eco-friendly sustainable crop in the world so you're going to help save the environment too so um uh so come to our energy our energybits.com by the way we also have these really cool canisters they come with oh, yes let me show you item. mine yes yeah yeah and um i love these each, yeah, aren't they? I love. By the way, I designed everything, and I just, I just wanted them to be beautiful. So um, they, beautiful. they come with a bag inside and a little travel tin, and so you open the bag and put the put the tablets in the canisters, and now you just shake out the tablets into your hand, easy peasy. And then when you run out of the tablets in your canister, then all you do is you buy a large bag and you and you replace the canister. These these the single servings, you know, are really handy for travel, for running, for going on a plane, going to work. You're stuck in the car. You don't get to dinner. By the way, this brand Vitality Bits is a blend of the two algae. Um, oh, both case, of them. So it has spirulina and so when yeah. do you, when do you take that one? Is that one in the well, morning? You would or? take you know ten in the morning and ten at night. And we only did oh. this because some people just don't want to have to think about the different things. So the two. okay. So it's it's a blend. And the other thing I want to point out is that. There are two spirulinas, and I'm not trying to trick anybody, but I started the company because of my sister having breast cancer. So women's health has always been very important to me. Mm-hmm. But after a couple of years, I found out, I noticed that women just weren't buying the spirulina. So I talked to my girlfriends, and literally, this is what they said. You got to make it pink and give it a cute name. And because it has more collagen than collagen powder, and it has, it stops free radical damage of your elastin. So it's really good for your skin and hair. I made a second brand of spirulina. Same they product, it's just pink. Exactly <laughs> the same. So someone said, well, you got a boy spirulina and a girl spirulina. Oh, that's funny. And, and it's sort of true. By the way, we sell these now in, in uh, Neiman Marcus, uh, and that's what they they ordered, the beauty bits. And the, the pink one. Mm-hmm. I've been doing this for 13 years. The, the world is waking up to algae. Um, it's just taken a long time to get all the messaging and all the science. Uh, I promise you everything I've told you today is correct. I encourage you to go online and Google some of the things I've talked about, superoxidismutase protecting heart and the um, spicocyanin protecting you from cancer. Um, This is a gift from mother nature. She just needed someone to explain it to you and provide you with one that was carefully grown Thank so you. it's it's exciting to me to know I've got something for everyone. And uh, um, it's, it's, you know, I'm just the voice. I'm just the voice for algae. I'm, it's mother nature's. She, she provided for us. <laughs> well, Catherine, your passion for what you do has been very apparent through our entire conversation. You are so <laughs> into your work and I really appreciate that. I just want to reflect that back to you and Thank what you. a generous offer for our listeners, the better podcast listeners. I will make sure that it's in the show notes, but it's energybits.com forward slash better. And it's 20% of anything on the cart and anything that you kind of put in your cart, you're going to get 20% anytime. All right. So it's not just first time. It's like recurrent. That's great. So, so generous. And uh, yes, I will definitely look forward to seeing some of those papers. We'll include links for them. And of course, the Energy Bits website. It's been just a pleasure talking to you today. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Stephanie.